continue with this the message. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 24. And verse number 4, we'll actually be jumping back a few chapters uh, when we get to the end of the message this morning. But at first, I want to look at uh, just one scripture, and uh, then we'll look at more context uh, to Jeremiah in just a moment. Jeremiah chapter number 24, verse number 4. The Bible says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into details of this, but how many of you uh, have ever been amazed by politics? Uh, there can be some scandalous things that can happen, but people can come back on the scene again. You ever, you ever notice that? Even after scandalous things. More so when we look at some of our greatest leaders, when we look at history, They've come back on the scene again after failure, after failure, after failure. But they get back up and they, they, they say, I'm going to brush the dirt off my knees and wipe my hands off and I'm going to do it again. Amen. It's, it's amazing to think about. There's something that is great about that word again. Uh, again. Again, think about that again. The word again. Wow, it's a powerful word. Again, uh, what, uh, Mr. Webster says that the word again uh, is this. It means another time uh, 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 doing it over. Uh, another time doing it over. Uh, one more time. Uh, our girls, if you do something fun with them, and they put their hands together in that little more more that they learned when they were very young, that means do it again, repeat. They like it again. Uh, you ever uh, something that uh, is thrilling or something that is fun, do it again. I, I want to talk about that in, in context of God's Word, the Word again. When we look at the Word of God, uh, the word sin is used 448 times in the Bible. Anger is used 234 times in the Bible. The word hate is used 87 times in the Bible. Envy is used 20 times in the Bible. Lust is found 18 times in the Bible. And uh, when we look at the word again, and uh, salt and pepper throughout the Word of God from Old Testament to New Testament, you'll find the Word again 672 times. Wow! Wow! The Word again 672 times throughout the Word of God. Now, I, I don't want to make light of sin. That's not what this is about this morning, my message. Sin needs to be repented of in the Word of God. However, the good news is this, is that once sin is placed under the blood, it gives, it gives God an opportunity to do something again in your life. Amen. I, 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 I allow us to look at it in that way because I believe that that's fair and that is true from the Word of God. Uh, but, but I also want us to shift gears and our minds to think about it this way. Have you seen God heal a body before? God can do it again. Has God spoke to your heart before in your life? Amen. God can do it again. Have you been in a service where you felt the falling of the power of God, the wind of God blow, the Spirit of God move, and the fire of God ignites your soul? Amen. I, I need to tell you that God can do it again. Amen. God is a God of again. Why would God, throughout the Word of God, uh, drop that Word so many times again if He did not want to remind us that in our lives, He wants to do it again. God wants to blow the wind of the Holy Ghost in our life again. God wants 
pastor drop the fire again. God wants to speak to the depth of our soul, uh, whether it's through a still small whisper, or whether it's by an audible voice, or whether it's by uh, the rolling of thunder. God wants to do it again. And then I believe God wants to work in our life again. Now, once again, if there's something that you need to move from your life to allow God's Spirit the liberty to work and move, then move it. Amen? You can't do it through your own flesh and blood. You can't do it through your own might and power. But you can do it through the Spirit of God and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Remove any obstacle that keeps God from moving in your life again. I love when we look at the Word of God. Uh, you know, we find that that generous Word throughout the Word of God can defeat sin and anger and lust and envy and bitterness. And those things kind of get in our life. And as we live a life, if you allow them to snowball, they'll overtake your life. But if you allow the Word again to come in and conquer them, they become nothing to the Spirit and the moving of God's power in your life. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 3, my wife told me not to take my jacket off. Sorry if you see a stain on my shirt, but I'm hot, alright? We'll wash it again. I love 1 Samuel 3, 8, where the Word of God says, and the Lord calls Samuel, what's the next word? Again. And the Lord called Samuel again. And he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Uh, uh, and the thing that I want us to notice is the word again. Amen. Here it is that Samuel has been dedicated to his mom, uh, uh, Hannah. Remember, she comes to the temple and she prays. She's misunderstood by the man of God, Eli. He thinks that she's drunken. But she said, I'm a woman of a broken heart. I can't have a child. Uh, my, my husband, uh, uh, his other wives conceive and have many children. And my heart is broken. You'll have a child. She's given a child. She makes a dedication to God. She said, this child will serve the Lord all the days of his life. And so she gives the child Samuel to the Lord. And Samuel is nurtured and raised there in, in, in the temple. And so uh, Eli, he doesn't have a clear uh, uh, perception of the voice of God. However, the Lord reaches out to Samuel and speaks to him one time, two times. And then again, again, the Bible says, the Lord speaks a third time. And he goes to Eli, uh, well, the Lord spoke to me. And then Eli realizes God is speaking to the, uh, the child. Uh, when, when God speaks, Samuel, uh, say, here I am, Lord, for thy servant. Here, God speaks again, even when we don't completely hear. You may say, I think I heard God speak something to my heart, but I'm not sure. I have good news for you. Find the place where you were when God spoke to you and be quiet and listen for God to speak again because He has direction for you and your life and what He wants you to do. You may say, Brother Samuel, do you think God would speak again? Boy, did for Samuel. And how about when we look at, in Judges chapter number 13, the Word of God says that there was a man and a woman that didn't have any children. His name was Manoah. We don't know her name. And one day the Lord appears to her and says, you're going to have, to have a child. The angel speaks to her heart and she runs and she tells her husband, uh, the angel spoke to me and I'm going to have a child. Well, how shall we raise this child? What shall we do? Uh, we, we have many questions. She said, I didn't even ask his name. I don't know anything where he's from or anything about this. I just know he spoke to me. And so uh, uh, she, she begins to pray. And her husband prays, will you come again? But David, would you know that one day she was out by herself and the angel appeared again. 
And she said, wait a second. I need for uh, you to wait here. I need to go and get my husband and bring him here because we need to hear again from you. And so she grabbed her husband and she brought her husband there and the angel spoke again to them. There's something to be said about again. Do you need God to speak to your heart again? Has there been things God has spoken and you say, well, God, it hasn't really been that clear. I need you to speak again to me. God speaks again and again and again as we need His Word to speak to our hearts. It's interesting because Manoah's wife said, I know that you spoke to me, but I need you to speak to my husband. Is there things that God has spoken to your heart and you know that God has spoken, but now you need God to speak to the heart of someone else so that you can see the evidence of what God has spoken come to pass. If you're a husband or wife and need God to speak to your spouse, God can speak again. If you're a mom or dad and need God to speak to your children, God can speak again. If you're a brother or sister and need God to speak to your biological or spiritual brother or sister, God is able to speak again. Amen. Would you trust in the power of the Word again that God will do it again? There's something powerful about that. You see, because God realizes that we as humans, we need God to speak again in our lives. Don't you love how God worked in Adam and Eve's life? But then, through the course of time, they needed a fresh word from God. And so God spoke to them again. God spoke again. Human hearts, sometimes we just need God to speak again. Praise God. Speak <coughs> again. In the book of Jonah, we read there in chapter number 1 that God spoke to Jonah and He said, Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh. What did Jonah do? He said, yes, God, I'll, I'll arise and go in that direction that you want me to go right now. No, unfortunately, Jonah didn't do what God wanted him to do. Jonah went in a different direction. And so you find that later in Jonah, in Jonah chapter number 2, uh, 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 and then chapter number 3, the Bible says that again the word of the Lord came to Jonah. It was after there was a storm. It was after there were some lots. It was after there was a big fish. It was after a lot of prey. Sister Tina, that the Lord speaks again to Jonah. Listen, because in our life, Amen. We as humans sometimes get in our own way, in our own mindset. And I'm not making an excuse for sin. And I'm not making an excuse for going in a different direction. But I'm saying that we have a merciful God. That if you need God to speak again because your heart didn't do what God wanted you to do the first time. I believe that if you will be intent in calling out upon the name of the Lord, that God will speak again. Thank God for that. Amen. He speaks again and He reiterates, I need you to do this. I need you to surrender this area. I need you to go this direction. Amen. If we will surrender to God, amen, the power of again, God's Word comes again. 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 Do you remember a young man who was fearful, seeking the direction of God? And he said, God, I'm going to lay a fleece on it. Lord, if it's your will, then make the fleece be wet and everything else dry. Was 
that good enough to you? No. Then Sister Tiffany, he said, God, I'm sorry, I'm a man. Could it just be coincidence or circumstance? Could you let the ground, could you let, let, let the ground be wet and would you let the fleece be dry? Would you do it again? And guess what? Gideon got up and the next day, God had done it again. What are the fears, the anxieties, sometimes the doubts that hold us back? What will change that is a God that will do it again because He wants to work and move in our life. Are there areas of your life where you say, God, I, I need your direction, I need your help, and God will spoke, oh, but maybe somewhere there's still some doubt in your mind? I want to encourage you this morning to trust the God of again who wants to work and move in your life and to do it again. See, I, I believe that mankind's hope is all based upon the word again. We find that, that Noah had built that ark for the saving of, of his house. And, and, and as the waters begin to, to descend, the Word of God says that he, in Genesis, uh, uh, you'll find Genesis chapter number 8, that he sends the dove out and the dove comes back and the waters hasn't completely receded. And then after seven days, Sister Susan, the Bible says that again he sent the dove out. And my goodness, the dove was gone all day long, but in the evening it came back and it had an olive a leaf there in its mouth. But it was because again he sent that dove out. There's something about the power of again. Amen. I'll pray again. I'll trust God again. Amen. I'll see what God has for me again. I don't care how many times you pray. I don't care how many times you ask God and the answer hasn't come. I believe that there's something about doing it again because God's timing is perfect. Mm -hmm. The power of again. You'll find that after Elijah takes the prophets on Mount Carmel, he found himself growing weary and discouraged, and he goes and he hides out, and he's just, he's just flat wore out. I mean, he's wore out physically, he's wore out spiritually, he's wore out emotionally. He is just spent. Have you ever been there before where, where, where physically you're wore out, but emotionally you're wore out, and spiritually you're wore out, wore out as well? I mean, you're just tired, and you're kind of hanging out in a wilderness place, but the Bible says that the word of the Lord came again, and it came through an angel, who gave him angel food, provided for him, and then gave him a new direction. Amen. God does have new direction for us in our life. There comes a time where the brook dries up and we've got to move on. There comes a time where we have great spiritual experiences, but God brings us to a new direction. The Word of the Lord comes again. Thank God that He passes by again. How about Isaac? He dug the wells again. He needed refreshment again, so he went back and he re-dug the wells. There's something to be said about that when we need a fresh touch from God, we go back and we re-dig the wells. We do it again. Do you need something from God? I want to encourage you, re-dig the wells. Do you remember the blind man that Jesus touches him and, and, and all of a sudden he says, this brother, what? He sees, I, I see men, but they're walking as trees. Now, I, I, I don't know, but, but I'd rather see your face and your smile and the characteristics of who God made you to be. Amen. And so the Bible says that what did Jesus do? He touched him again. Amen. And this time, he saw men appropriately. I believe it was 2020 because God touched them again. Oh, God, we need to touch again. Amen. It's not good enough just to see men walking as trees. But, but God, let me see as you see. And let me see clearly. Touch me again. I think sometimes... You know, you hear those stories when you're young about the the old miserable 
man or woman. You, you ever hear those stories? I've seen some people become that. And I've seen some folks that are Christian become that. You know why? Because they lost the power of again. Going back to God again and trusting God again and again and again that God can meet our needs. Listen, our whole life, our whole hope, the reason why we were here this morning is wrapped up in the Word again. Jesus said that you shall kill me, but I will rise again. I'll rise again. <laughs> we know he died on the cross. But on day number three, Chad, he rose again. And Brother David, the basis of our hope is in the Word again. Several years ago, you may remember a song, I believe it was by Dallas Hall, and he wrote this. He says, but I'll rise again. Ain't no power in hell can keep me down. I will rise again. The good news for all of us, amen, is that we can rise again. Though I fall, yet shall I rise. Amen. In our lives, we will fall. Amen. Uh, there's, there's no uh, shame or embarrassment in falling. Amen. The embarrassment is when we stay down and we don't get up. That's where the shame comes. But if I fall, I shall arise. Amen. I'm coming back again. The power of again. I spoke on this on when I spoke on Pentecost a few weeks ago about being redeemed. But in Leviticus chapter number 25, verse number 48, the word of God says, and after that he is and after that he is so he may be redeemed again by one of his brethren. You know the reason why we are here this morning is because of again, we've been redeemed again by Jesus Christ. We were born into sin, amen, but we've been redeemed again by Jesus Christ. One of the things that I like that Jesus said, He said, I, I go away to prepare a place for you, but I will come again. 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 I will come again. The hope of why we are here this morning is because He's coming again. Amen. He is coming again. He came once, amen, to come as a Savior of the world, but He's coming again as the King of the world. Again. I, I love... Jeremiah chapter number 18. And I'm closing with this. But God speaks to Jeremiah. And He's really speaking to him through uh, just sharing a lesson. And He tells him to go down to the potter's house. Now, pottery is a lot different than it is in our day and age. There's not machines making stuff. And, you know, there's not some synthetic plastic that they drink out of, but everything is clay. That's the vessels that they use. For the wall, for the most part, that there's some silver or, or, or gold or, or, or molten. But, but, but for the average person, they are using things, vessels that are made of clay, from carrying the water uh, to drinking to, to, to whatever they use for clay to be able to hydrate themselves and feed themselves. These vessels. And so uh, he goes down to the potter's house and he notices that as the potter is working that there is a vessel, but it is mine. Wow. If you know anything about the vessels, it means that they need to be perfect because just one air bubble will cause them to explode and become 
when I was in uh, middle school in art class, we would take clay and we were to work it. And man, it was hard. I mean, it was like it was a stone. I had to take it under the water and work it every day, working it, working it, working it. And then we had to make sure that we worked it in such a way that there were no air bubbles. And we heard it over and over and over again. When it goes to the fire, if there's air bubbles, it will break. It will not survive. Make sure it, it's... So, it, I mean, it was only a nine-week class, but it took all nine weeks to get this stupid little container made that was nothing. You know what I mean? But it was taking the clay, just working it, and I was fortunate. Mine made it through. I don't know what it is today. Maybe it's going to go out. No. But, but, but it was, it, we had to design it ourselves. And so I created an apple that had a lid that came off that you could put something in. You know, I, I, I what am I even thinking? And so I worked very hard with that. It made it to the fire of the wall. But there was times where I had to restart over and over again. When Jeremiah went to the potter's house, he saw the clay, he saw that it was mired. The vessel that he was walking on was mired. But did the potter throw it out and waste it? No. There's something about the world again that he started all over again. Working and making the vessel. You this morning are a creation of God. But you and I this morning are also a recreation of God. When things go haywire in our life, when things go helter skelter, when our faith is tried afresh and anew, even if we fail, God doesn't say, I'm done with that. People write us off, and we may have wrote people off and off. God doesn't work that way. From the palace to the prison, God is in the business of the recreating. You may hear people say in Hollywood, well, I reinvented myself, and they come back and they succeed bigger and better than what they were the first time. Seems like there's a new look, there's a new trend, there's a new something. They recreated themselves. God is not looking for us to recreate ourselves. But God is looking for Him to be recreated in us. <coughs> this morning, Sister Sandy, you would come. I just want to give us an opportunity to know these altars to know that there's something about the beginning that God wants us to. Revivals of yesterday, God wants to do it again. Speaking to our hearts, God wants to do it again. Giving direction, God wants to do it again. Touching our bodies, God wants to do it again. I'm amazed by how God touches and heals. I really feel like once again this week, I've been at the mercies of God because He's touched my body. I needed a healing. He needed me healing. He's healed me before, but I needed him to do it again. There's times I just need God to walk the spirit of my heart and direction again. There's times I just need the Holy Ghost to breathe upon me again. Do it again, God. Do a new thing. Do a greater thing. Do a fresh thing. Do it again. What do you need God to do again? <coughs> Jeremiah said, and I saw the body molded all over again. You need God to mold you all over again. Areas of your life. I started out saying that there's bitterness and there's lust and there's hate and there's sin throughout the world. <coughs>